My name is Blake Smith, and I am the CEO and Chief Science Officer for Zion Pharmaceuticals. My background is bioanalytical chemistry. I have multiple degrees, worked in pharmaceuticals, and I've taken that scientific knowledge and moved into cannabis. What made me want to go into making medicine? I think the biggest thing is helping people. This whole life can't be only about profit. We should be able to help people. My daughter was diagnosed with a genetic condition that gave her a predilection for seizures. We belonged to a parents' alliance that suggested cannabis might be an effective tool for that. I got a lot of products from around in a lot of different places and took them back to my lab. And I found a lot of weird things. Things weren't what people said they were. So I decided I needed to go do this on my own. I left my career. We built a large manufacturing facility. I started becoming a good cannabis scientist. And in doing so, we've been able to make medicine to help all kinds of conditions. My transition from hemp to cannabis really happened when Utah decided to bring on medical marijuana. Um, already I had experience in isolating cannabinoids. It was a natural fit to take it to the next level to make medicine outside of just the hemp bill. Yeah, dosing done right is extremely important to me because when we think about pharmaceuticals, the thing that distinguishes medicine from other types of, of medications or other things that people take is we know that this amount of milligrams has this physiological effect. And that is something that can be repeated over and over and over again. Medicine should be the same every time. The short answer on the synthetics versus analogs is this. We should be able to dose a particular amount, get a therapeutic effect, just like we would with any other medication. If you don't know what it is, then you could be having all kinds of physiological effects that we don't know. We know what's happening with pure Delta-8. That's just like any other cannabinoid, right? We need to be very careful about moving things out that are, are different. We should use good science for everything, natural products also. What happens with all of our biomass? So biomass typically can be defined in two ways. One is material that comes in that is not going to be turned into vaporizable flour. And so there's still THC present and that you run through extraction processes. And then you're also left with this aftermath that is also sometimes considered waste biomass. And so the state has rules about how you get rid of it and you have to account for all of it. And so every single time we either extract and we get waste product or we have cut stem and stock, that also has to be treated according to the laws of the state and then you can get rid of it that way. I'm the last one here pretty much every night, you know. Um, how do I find work-life balance? It's, it's hard. In the case of things with my family, um, my daughters, um, my wife, if they have specific needs, I will drop everything to go do anything I can for them as needed. There's more work that needs to be done and I need lifetimes to do it. I don't want to have any regrets when all this is over. I also am not sure how to do it all. Do my kids know what I'm doing? Uh, yes, they do. My oldest is hilarious all the time. You know, I walk in the door and she'll be like, dad, you smell like weed. And I'm like, oh, you know what weed smells like? You know, because you can't work in the facility and not smell like it. But honestly, I just talk to my family the same way I talk to anybody. Look, we're gonna, we treat this like a medicine. This is not recreational. And again, I don't necessarily have a moral issue against recreational, but as far as medicine, it's just like medicine. You, you're, you should be careful with how many Advil you take. You should be careful with Benadryl. Don't mix Tylenol and Benadryl together, right? If you have cannabis, you should think about how to use cannabis in the right and proper ways as well. One of the cool things about cannabis in terms of how it relates to patients is there are so many different things it can treat. Um, there's a lot of people who come out and talk that there is no one molecule that fixes everything. They're right. When we talk about cannabis, we're talking about a whole bunch of molecules. Think about dosing somebody with multiple different types of medications. But because of that, if we isolate those specific compounds, we can create medicines to help somebody with arthritis. We can help people with Parkinson's take a bike ride again. We can help kids with seizures. 
We can help somebody who has IBS their whole life. There's so many things that we can do. And uh, that's really cool. So we were able to do a study with, with a bunch of individuals and we were able to create a CBN um, molecule for them. And basically CBN helps with anxiety and helps with sleep. And after these individuals were on this, we hooked them back up to Neuronets and we noticed that there was a transition in the brain that showed that they were getting real sleep. And, and this is the, the part that's so cool. Uh, violent tendencies in every one of the individuals stopped 100%. Pi is this guy, we can do infinite research, infinite money. I would identify every single cannabinoid and its mechanism of action of how it actually works in the body so that we could specifically design a medication using each one of those individual cannabinoids to test and do everything. And, and I, you know, there's 120 cannabinoids right now. We know maybe what 10 of them do. And I don't know that all of them do something but I'd sure like to find out, right? That's the part that would be awesome. What keeps me sane on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, it's actually the people I work with. We have really good, high-quality people associated here, and I feel really lucky to have the people we do. My competitive side. I was much more competitive when I was young, but I think that's because I wasn't as confident in who I am. I, I would like to think that we, like wine, get better with age if it's a good wine. I would like to think I'm more confident in who I am and I don't have a lot of ego around things anymore. Having said that, truth is truth, science is science. Somebody comes out with something that's not correct, I feel obligated to say, yeah, that's not how I would think about it. But no matter what decisions we make, it should be based on good reason and good science. And that's where I'm still competitive. Somebody comes out and tells me something that's false, that those are fighting words. The things that are most important to me in life are my family, helping people. That's probably pretty much it, actually. I mean, that's kind of how I try to live my life. If I do those two things, then I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a human. When I can find the time, I like to hang out with my friends and play board games or watch movies. I like video games. Occasionally, I like to be by myself and read a really good book by a fire or something along those lines. My personal ethos, or if I had a tattoo, it's gonna say in Latin, what God loves men kill. I have Scottish and Viking you know, ancestors and like I like to think of myself a bit as a warrior. I don't think we should be timid in life. Own it, accept yourself, go get it, and don't be apologetic for it.